Good morning, Sharptown Church. It's good to be with you this morning on this last Sunday in May. It's hard to believe it's the last Sunday in May, but uh, we're excited to worship with you wherever you find yourself this morning. If you're in your living room, um, if you're still laying in bed and you're just watching us on the laptop, um, but we're going to worship together no matter where we are, and uh, we're going to sing the songs called um, Holy Spirit just to set the mood of our worship service this morning. Let's sing together.
great to be worshiping with you this morning. We're going to sing this old hymn of the church. It's called, It Is Well With My Soul.
Well, good morning once again, folks. Welcome to Online Church. It is so good to be together even while we are apart. If you can, take a moment and let us know that you are joining us. Comment there on the live feed and say hello to some of your friends and family that you see on there as well. Kind of like a virtual Sharptown Church greeting time. My name is Kristen Rain. If we haven't met, I'm on staff here at Sharptown Church, and I'm kind of tasked with keeping all of our announcements and calendar in order. And so there's a couple things that I want to share with you, a couple things on the horizon. First is this. It is graduation time, and I'm thrilled that many of our local high schools have now made an opportunity for an outside graduation. We here at Sharptown Church honor our graduates each and every year, and 2020 will be no different. But we need your help in knowing who our graduates are and some information about them or about you if you're watching and you're a graduate. So if you are graduating high school this year or college or really a master's or a doctoral degree in college, we want to hear from you. If you could take a moment, um, yourself or a family member on your behalf would send us an email, send it to ben at sharptown.org with a picture. We would love to have a picture of just the graduate. Let us know where you're graduating from and what your plans are next. We will be honoring our graduates here within the next couple weeks, and we're excited to share a little bit more about how we're going to do that. You'll hear that next week. And so you see this slide next to me. There is change just ahead for quite some time. We have been apart yet together online, but I am excited that things are changing. The governor is opening some things up, and we're going to have the opportunity to be together real soon. The first change I want to share with you is the times for our morning daily messages. We have been offering daily messages from the staff at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., and those times made sense when the quarantine first started and a lot of folks weren't working and the weather outside really wasn't nice. But now that many folks are transitioning back to work and people are wanting to be outside and it's light later, we're changing those times to 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. That begins tomorrow, so we're calling that DMs live on the nines. I just want to remind you and to let you know that if you can't join in at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., you have the opportunity to watch them at any time during the day, either from Facebook, they're still posted, or on the church website, it links you to our YouTube page. The cool thing about being on there on the nines is that we're kind of in community together and you can say hello to folks and kind of comment there together. But if you can't make those times, it's okay. Catch that any time that you can. And so this next slide, I'm so excited about this. Beginning on June the 14th, we are having drive-in church. We are going to be worshiping together from the parking lot at the back of Caltown at 9.30 a.m. one service. We're going to be doing that on June 14th, June 21st, June 28th, and July the 5th. Hopefully after that we'll be transitioning back into this building. And so we're calling it Sharptown Church at Caltown. I like to say Sharptown Church and Caltown, often imitated but certainly never equaled. And so I want you to know that we're going to be hearing and putting out more information about that. But when you come, you will have a parking square and you will be very socially distanced apart. You can sit in your car. You can put lawn chairs out in your square uh, as long as you kind of stay six feet from other families or a whole parking space. And so mark your calendar. We are having lawn signs printed up. We want to advertise this heavily within our community and around our county. We just want to point the entire county to Jesus if we can. And so we'll be sharing information about that via email. You'll have the chance to come to the church and pick up a lawn sign uh, if you would like to put one in your yard. And so the, just the next thing that I want to share with you, next Sunday is Communion Sunday. I am excited about the fact that this is potentially the last communion that we will have all completely apart. I'm hoping that by the time our first Sunday in July rolls around, we'll be together. And that's what we have planned over at Caltown. But for next Sunday, Communion Sunday, we will still be worshiping apart. And so we invite you to pick up prepackaged communion elements like you have done the past two months. You can pick them up here at the church on Thursday evening from 5 to 7 p.m. You can pick them up from the AJ's parking lot in Pennsville. You could also pick them up from Pastor Jerry's Curb at 123 Spruce Trail in Woolwich. We have had a pickup spot at Hudox. We're not having that this time because Hudox 
in Salem is now open and very busy in the evenings. And so just those three locations come on Thursday between 5 and 7. If you can't make those times and you need to make alternate arrangements to pick up your communion elements, that's okay. Reach out to the office, give me a call, and we'll make sure that you get those. And then the last reminder that we just say each and every week uh, that you can give to Sharptown Church and support the ministry of Sharptown in a several different ways. You could use the Give Plus app. You can go from the church website and give through Vanco, or you can drop a check off at the church. And I continue, the leadership team at Sharptown continues to be amazed by your faithfulness and your generosity. Our giving is holding at over 90%, and that's an anomaly around the country. So yet another reason that Sharptown Church is unequal. Thank you to the people of God, to the faithful folks of Sharptown for your support in this area. You can go ahead and give right now if you'd like. You can do that anytime this week. A lot of you do that at the end of the week. Any way that you give, we're grateful. I say thank you on behalf of our finance team. The ministry of Sharptown Church continues to go strong. Would you bow with me and pray for a moment? Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who have joined us today. Lord, may they feel a touch from you right now. Lord, whether we are gathered in living rooms or whether we are sitting outside watching service on our cell phone or there's a few of us here in the worship center, Lord, we may not physically be together, but we are together as one body, one body who loves you. And so, Lord, I pray that our service this morning is bringing honor and glory to you. At this moment in the service where we think about our gifts and our offerings, Lord, I pray that you would anoint what's given so that it continues to make a difference to expand your kingdom. May your name be lifted high. Will you continue to direct the paths of Sharptown Church, of all of our individual folks who attend here, that we would be light in this world. May folks come to know more about who you are because of our witness, individually and collectively. Use what is given to continue to make a difference and to lift your name high. Lord, we celebrate that changes are ahead. It's been far too long that we've been together. So, Lord, we ask that you go before the details of these services over at Caltown. We thank you tremendously for Grant and Betsy Harris for their willingness to open up their facility and not just to open it up to be helpful and to be supportive. Lord, would you bless them today? Would you draw them unto yourself? May they feel a presence from you. Lord, as we continue in our service, we pray that the words of our mouths, that the worship that comes from our mouths would be a blessing to you. May it fill your throne room. Lord Jesus, we love you. And Lord, we are also mindful in this moment that there are folks in our congregation who are experiencing so many needs, financial hardships, sicknesses, illnesses, deaths in their family, just complete loneliness, uncertainty, frustration, difficulty at home. Lord, you know every single person. You made them. You know the hairs on their head. And you know what the needs are this morning. Lord, will you touch our folks with your mighty hand? Will you remind them that you are good, that you love them, that you're going to provide for them, and that you will care for them? Lord, we commit the rest of this service to you. But I pray that you would continue to speak through our music team. We're thankful for them. I pray that as Doug opens the word this morning, that the words that he shares are directly from you. Lord, and I pray that as we open our hearts and minds to what you have to say to us this morning, that it makes a difference in how we live our lives. So, Lord Jesus, we're grateful that even though we're apart, we can be together. We're grateful that in just a short time, we're going to be together again. And, Lord, we are grateful for how you provide and care. And for all of these reasons and so much more, we worship you. Lord, we love you so much today and every day. In your beautiful, precious, and holy name we pray. Amen.
walking the same old road for miles and miles. Have you been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies? If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day and dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. Well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you got lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom or saving. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it. You receive it if you can't feel it. Somebody testify if you believe it. If you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song, as you are good, good.
Sharp Town, it's good to see each one of you here today once again. Thank you for joining us online, not only within the congregation of our Sharp Town Church, but also abroad. We're thrilled to be able to once again join you at the end of May. Can you believe that? The end of May. On a personal note, today is my anniversary. And so as a result of that, I'm glad to uh, say happy anniversary, Julie. And so glad to continue to live married life with you. On this past Thursday evening, uh, we had the opportunity to sit together on a Zoom conference for the administrative board at Sharptown. I want to share with you some outstanding news uh, in the life of our church family. The first is this. 
Skip Squirit, who chairs our finance team, reported that at the end of May, well, back up, at the 24th of May, we continue to give our tithes and offerings at a 91% rate uh, in comparison to our budget need. And so, Sharptown, that's fantastic news. In the midst of a pandemic, thank you so many of you who give on the app, the Give Plus app, or who give online. Thank you for those who have been faithful even to drop by the church office and have dropped your checks off, your tithe off. Thank you so much for your faithfulness during this time. I think that is remarkable that the rate of which we continue to give to meet the budget to expand God's kingdom is at 91%. In addition, I just want to reiterate one more time that we are following the governor of New Jersey's guidelines for how to reopen our facility. If you have questions about when this is going to take place and how this is going to take place, please go to our website. Uh, we recognize we will be together shortly. However, it's just not going to look the same as you perhaps are accustomed to. And so as a result of that, please go to the website. Details for that will be posted uh, on our site. And then in addition, we're following Governor Murphy's guidelines for when we reopen our facility. However, we have mentioned, and you have heard, and you're going to continue to hear, we want to invite all of Salem County to join us to drive in church on the 14th of June, and then the anticipated date for when we're back together inside of this facility is not until the 12th of July. So we are looking for a stopgap measure. Many thanks to Grant and Betsy Harris uh, for making this available for Sharptown Church. And we look forward to what this is going to be like as God continues to add to the number of Sharptown uh, congregants as we continue to share the gospel with people inside of our community. And we look forward to some great services outside at the back of the Cowtown Rodeo Campground, often imitated never equaled. This morning I'd like to turn your attention, if I could, to a passage of scripture that is maybe one of the more familiar passages in the Old Testament. If you've spent some time inside of the book of Isaiah, I want to invite you to grab your Bibles and turn with me to Isaiah chapter 6. If you don't have your Bible, we're going to put that on the screen as well. I'd like to walk down through a few verses inside of the sixth chapter of Isaiah and then eventually get to the place of our focus this morning, which is going to be around the continued thought we've been considering about prayer and the fact that prayer has the capacity to change history. This is one of the moments inside of the Old Testament where that happens and that pattern is set apart and that's exactly what takes place. And so in Isaiah chapter 6, we read these words. In the year King Uzziah died, I had a vision of the Lord. Isaiah is writing and he's talking specifically about a time in history, about one who had been on the throne. Now, this is an important sentence to, to ground our thinking, specifically because in the context, what's happening in the life of Uzziah's reign is the fact that for 52 years he has been on the throne. 52 years. And so the country has experienced stability. The country has experienced a sense of calm. A sense of leadership has been in the midst of the country. But now, says Isaiah, Uzziah has died. And as a result of that, the pressure around the borders is being intensified and the Assyrians are coming. They are the bully on the block and they are coming to put pressure. In the year King Uzziah died. This sentence is critical. It would sound something like this today. The rug got pulled out from under me. The transition came quickly. I was blindsided by the circumstance. It was an unstable environment. This is what Isaiah is describing. Things that had been counted on are no longer counted on. And there is a time of upheaval and a time of turmoil. And Isaiah says, in that moment, God gave him a vision. 
Now notice, if you will, the specifics of the vision. There aren't many words that are wasted in the midst of this description. Isaiah said, he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord. And not only he saw the Lord, but he was seated on the throne. The implication and the inference surely is that God's kingdom in the midst of what was happening and transpiring has come into this place and I saw the Lord. Now notice what he says about how this visual unfolds, this supernatural experience of a vision. Isaiah says that his robe, other translations said the hem of his robe, fills the temple. How big is God? Well, the temple description is the fact that it is 75 foot. Can you imagine the hem of someone's garment being 75 foot? That's what Isaiah is saying. God is so big. He's so large. He's so grand. His expanse, his character fills the building. Fills the building. Now, what's also intriguing about Isaiah's vision and the supernatural dynamic of that, he describes beings called seraphim or inside of the contemporary english version flaming creatures the hebrew says burning ones it appears as though they're on fire they're flaming and they're on either side of the throne and with six wings they're flying over the throne this is a magnificent kind of awe-inspiring experience for isaiah They covered their faces with two of the wings. They covered their feet, some translations say. This translation says covered their body. The same inference is uh, especially important. And with two, they flew. In a sense of humility, in a sense of adoration, in a sense of unworthiness, they cover themselves because they have an inability to be in the presence of God. A God who is so big, who is so large, that his robe, the hem of his garment, fills the entire temple. And then they used the other two wings to fly, and they shouted, they communicated, and this is what they said. Holy, 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 Lord all-powerful, the earth is filled with glory. Your character, your presence is felt all around and in the midst of this the idea that God is holy. It is important that this is not mentioned just once. This is not mentioned just twice. This is mentioned three times. Isaiah says you are absolutely holy. You are beyond compare. You are uniquely other than who I am. And as a result of that, your holiness is such that the seraphim, the burning ones, they cover their eyes, they cover their body, their feet, they cover themselves because they can't be in your presence. And their response is one of adoration. Their response is one of worship. Their response is reflecting back to God his holiness. And as they shouted, the doorposts of the temple shook. The temple is filled with smoke, says Isaiah. And then his response. I cried out. I'm doomed. Now, I want to pause here on this particular response. And I want to give you a, a wonderful visual for what this word means. There is a scene in The Wizard of Oz at the tail end of the movie. The Wicked Witch is standing before Dorothy, the Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, and the Scarecrow. She takes her broom and she reaches up and she lights the broom and she gets ready to say, I'm going to light you on fire, Scarecrow, and that's exactly what happens. And your little dog too. And she leans over. Dorothy grabs a bucket of water to put out the scarecrow, catches the scarecrow. The overflow of the water hits the wicked witch, and she screams, I'm melting, I'm melting. 
That is this word. Some translators say, I am dissolving. Some translators say, I am doomed. The King James Version says, woe is me, I am undone. It is funeral language. I have come to an end of myself. I am nothing but a puddle before you, standing in the midst of your holiness. Now I would think, if I was writing this story, my next sentence would not match Isaiah's. I find it fascinating that Isaiah does not say, my heart is sinful. Why does Isaiah say, my lips are sinful? Or my words are sinful? And then, I find it equally intriguing about how it is that he continues to broaden the perspective and say, not only I respond this way, but all of the people around me. I think it's interesting that, in fact, many of us could go ahead and claim to have a clean heart, but yet our lips or our mouth, our actions do not match the interior of what we witness to or what we make the claim about inside of our lives. Isaiah says, my actions are unclean. It's demonstrated by what comes out of my mouth. And it's fascinating to me that he knows that immediately. That is his knee-jerk response, being in the presence of a God that is holy. And then this fascinating response. Remember how the chapter began in the year King Uzziah died? And now in verse 5, Isaiah circles back and says, I have seen the king. It's interesting to me that when Isaiah takes time to be in the presence of a God who is holy and his response is, I am undone, I am melting, I am dissolving in your presence, then he makes the statement that I see the king. There are some who would make this observation about this passage, and I think it's a a right observation. That is only when the death of the king happens can we actually identify and live for the rightful king. What takes place in this circumstance is the idea that Uzziah has died, and all of my dependence is in Uzziah. But now in Uzziah's death, I have come face to face with the reality that God, you are the one who is the rightful king, the Lord all-powerful. Human inability, holy God, and unclean self. These characteristics or these items in Isaiah chapter 6 become significant. And they become significant because of the response of Isaiah. Listen, friends. We all recognize that in hopeless circumstances, with nowhere else to go, when the rug gets pulled out from under us, when we are on our back and the only place we have to look is up, when we come to an end in ourself, when we can't manipulate the circumstance anymore, Oftentimes we find and are confronted face to face with a God who is holy, uniquely other than who we are, and he brings himself into those circumstances. Repeatedly, the response inside the Bible, when people come in a close proximity with a holy God, the first response is, in comparison to you, God, I just am not worthy to be here. I feel undone. I feel as though I am dissolving in your presence. Isaiah mentions the fact that in that moment, one of the flaming creatures, one of the burning ones, flew over with me with a burning coal that he'd taken from the altar 
uh, with a pair of tongs. My first response is that, you know, if the burning one is already a flame, how hot must the coal be that he needs to use tongs, right? I mean, how's that happen? And so he grabs a pair of tongs because the coal is hotter than he is already a burning one and places it on the lips of Isaiah. Your sins are forgiven and you are no longer guilty. Listen, today is Pentecost Sunday in the history of the church. It's a day when the church looks back over its shoulder and recognizes the movement of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 that births a movement that changes the world. It's the fulfillment of what Jesus Christ spoke about in John 14, 15, and 16 that I am going to send you another counselor, another comforter, the paraclete. He is going to be with you forever He is going to bear witness to who I am, and he is going to inflame your life. Do you know that the imagery of burning fire inside the Bible is representative of God's presence? That in the Old Testament, especially as Moses stands in front of the burning bush, that the thing that becomes unique is the fact that the burning bush was not consumed. That was the miraculous thing, but the bush was on fire. Typically, fire is mentioned because it cleanses, it consumes, and consistently transforms. The pillar of fire over the tabernacle demonstrating God's presence. The flaming tongues of fire present at Pentecost, consuming, cleansing, transforming people's lives. The tongs took the coal and placed it on Isaiah's lips. And then Isaiah responds in this fashion. And here is where we want to conclude and get to today. After this, scripture says, after this, I heard the Lord ask, is there anyone I can send and who will go for us? Now, notice the progression, if you will. The inability of Isaiah's spirit meeting a holy God, recognizing his sin, the cleansing, the consuming fire from the altar that's transforming Isaiah, and then these words, after this. I want to contend to you that if God had spoken before this action in Isaiah's life, he would not have heard him. It's only after God has done a cleansing work in Isaiah's heart and in Isaiah's life that he has the capacity to hear God's voice clearly. And so when God speaks, Isaiah, because of all that God had accomplished in his life already inside of this encounter, Isaiah cannot help but respond, here I am. Who will go for us, says God. And Isaiah responds, I'll go, send me. And IV says, here I am, send me. Let's pause here for just a moment and say, this becomes one of the prayers inside of the Bible that we might should consider inside of our life because I think this prayer of availability changes history what does this look like inside of a person's life that in response to what God has done inside of his life in her life that by God's grace that he's cleansed and purified he's forgiven that all we can do is respond Lord I want somehow to serve you no matter where it is no matter when it is no matter what it is This prayer of availability. But I have to tell you that inside of the Bible, when people encounter God, and when God extends an invitation, the automatic response is not, here am I, send me. Let me illustrate for you if I could. You remember that biblical character Jonah, where God comes and speaks to Jonah and says, Jonah, 
I want you to go here. And Jonah says, here am I, God. I will not go. And so in response, instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah gets on a boat and goes exactly the opposite direction to Tarshish. Here am I, God. I will not go. There are times inside of your life and mine, if we've had opportunity to walk with the Lord for any period of time and to attempt to discern His voice, His leading, His prompting inside of our lives, that we've had these spiritual misses inside of our life. Pick up the phone and call. Write a note. Stop by and see. Make a visit. Have a conversation. I've had these spiritual misses inside of my life. When I've been too busy, I've been too consumed, I've not responded, and there are circumstances after circumstances that are probably too many that I could recount right now, but I do know that if you've walked with the Lord for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The reason these occur inside of our life have to do with our response to God's prompting. Here am I, I will not go. Let me ask you today, what are the things that God has prompted you about and you have said, I'm not going to Nineveh and I won't go. That's one response inside of the Bible. You would like to think that all the responses are like Isaiah's, but they're not. I think the reason that these are included in Scripture is because we need to see how other people have responded. We can identify with them. This is the wrong response. Here am I, God. I will not go. And then the next response is Moses. He responds in this manner, standing before the burning bush. Here am I, God. Send somebody else. Look, Lord, I know you might want to go ahead and do this work, but you have to do it through and with someone else. They have more charisma. They've got more energy. They've got, you fill in the blank. We have a ton of excuses. Here am I, Lord. Send someone else. Moses' response was, I can't speak clearly. Aaron speaks clearly. My brother, send him. But you do know that story coming out of Exodus. And God is not content to send Aaron. But perseveres with Moses. Here am I, God. Send somebody else. They have more talent. They've got more skill. They've got more affluence. They've got more availability. Whatever that line is that you want to fill in, I just want to say to you again, the reason these responses are in Scripture is because they seem to be common to the human condition. When we come into God's presence and He speaks to our hearts, our response always isn't the same as Isaiah's. But here is Isaiah's response. Here am I. Send me. Let me ask you today about your responses in prayer. Or is this a response or a prayer that you have offered to God or dare to offer God? I believe the chronology in Isaiah 6 is important. That Isaiah comes to an end in himself where the king he's lived under his authority for 52 years has died. And now the rug is pulled out from under him and he has a human inability. And then he comes face to face with the presence of Almighty God. 
He recognizes his condition as far as being sinful. But then in a response to God's grace, he says, send me, send me. Years ago, I was at a conference and I encountered a song that I had never heard before. It comes out of, it's a spiritual that's written and, and you can catch this online. The woman who wrote it, she has a Isaiah response. These words have lived with me since I've learned this song and occasionally when I am praying or caught in the middle of a, a conundrum, not sure where to go forward and how to go forward. From time to time, the Holy Spirit will actually prompt the lyrics of this song. And I'll say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say, yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And the answer will not be, I will not go. The answer will not be, send someone else. The answer will be, here am I, Lord, send me. These are dangerous prayers to pray. They make us a little unsettled. It's curious to me how people follow a loving, gracious God who is for us, not against us. And sometimes, never ever get to the place inside of our life of praying a prayer of availability. That you can use my life, Lord, anywhere, anytime, in any place, under any circumstance. I will give to you anything that I have that can be used for your glory to expand your kingdom. If you've been coming to Sharptown Church for a while, these next words are not unfamiliar to you. Let me just share them with you. They are a prayer of availability. They come out of our history. Uh, the person John Wesley this is a covenant prayer. I am no longer my own, but I'm thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee. Let me be lay aside for thee. Exalted for thee. Brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. And now, blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, and I am thine. Here am I. Send me. This morning, I'd like to invite you to make that your prayer. And invite the Spirit of God to do a work inside of your heart, perhaps of cleansing first, perhaps of transformation first that we might hear God speak to us specifically not only as individuals but then to Sharptown Church as we find ourselves transitioning from quarantine and into a time of outreach inside of our community may our response be the same here are we Lord send us here am I, send me. Will you pray with me? In our closing moments today, Lord, we would ask that we might have an acute awareness of a God that is holy and high and lifted up. And that in response, you may help us inside of our own mind's eye, inside of our own heart, inside of our own determination 
to set aside one king, perhaps, that we've been following in other areas inside of our life. And Lord, we pray that you will come front and center inside of our vision that we would only see you seated upon the throne. Come, we would pray, as a consuming fire, as a cleansing fire, as a transforming fire inside of our lives. And may you inflame all that we would say and do for your kingdom. And might you speak to our hearts today. And Lord, give us the courage to respond to your grace. Here am I. Send me. Without any qualifications. Without any hesitations. Without any conditions. To present to you a blank contract with our signature at the bottom. Wherever, whenever, however you want to use us, will you, Lord, speak to our hearts. We are available at your good service. We ask these things, not only in our own individual lives, but collectively as a church. In these next few months as we move from being apart to move being together, we would ask that you would inflame our lives by your Holy Spirit for the tasks that are ahead. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.